All right, hey guys, Cole here. Welcome back to my video. So I really didn't expect to hit a thousand subscribers this early, and as promised, it's time for the thumbnail tutorial, the most requested video on this channel. So on this channel, I'm only gonna be doing one tutorial for one of my styles, but on my design channel, which there'll be a link in the description, I'm gonna be showing off a tutorial on how to do the rest of those styles. So if you don't like this style, you know, you can watch my tutorials on my other channels and learn how to do those. All right, so I'm gonna be doing this kind of 2D style, the style that I've been using lately on my channel. I'm gonna be doing this through Lunar Client's Replay Mod. Usually I use custom NPCs, but I've found Replay Mod just makes it look a lot better. All right, so usually what I do first, I just join whatever server I wanna get the screenshot on. Once you're here, I'm just going to join Skywars because that's the game I play the most. And next, I'm going to press P. Make sure you have Lunar Client's Replay Mod on or this won't work. And that should start the recording. It'll say recording started there. Alright, so once you're done, all you have to do is press P again. It'll say save and replay file and you can leave the server. Alright, once you're done there, go to the replay viewer. And here's my replay right here. So I'm just going to click on this. And here we are in the replay. So we can just fly around freely in here. So my kill over here was near the end, so I'm going to skip over there, and I'm going to go find me. Alright, so here I am. Here's where I get the kill. So I'm just going to unpause this. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. So I rush this guy. Alright, so here's now where you want to be careful. I'm going to decrease the speed all the way to its lowest, and I'm going to watch for where I want it to pause. So I'm going to get my cursor ready to pause about right there. That looks perfect. Alright, so here we are. I'm going to press F1 so we can hide this GUI. I'm going to turn down my FOV just because it makes the screenshot look a little bit better. And then if you want to get somewhat of a cinematic effect, you can use J and L to rotate your camera like this. So I think that looks pretty cool right there. So once you've got your camera angle lined up, just press F2, take a screenshot. And this menu is going to appear. Don't press anything. Don't change anything. Just press take screenshot. Then just press show file on disk. All right. So once you've got your screenshot, you just want to open up Photoshop or whatever photo editing tool you want to use. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to make a 1920 by 1080 document. All right, so here we are. So I'm just going to quickly copy our image by going right click, copy, paste, and here we have this. All right, so first, usually the first thing I do is I go to my magic wand tool, change the object selection tool, and I do this. It doesn't work perfectly, but, you know, it kind of, it gets some of it. Now, if this starts to happen, where as you're selecting, you can see it's selecting a lot more than you want it to, make sure you have this turned on because this what this does is makes it so it doesn't select everything of that color so it did take a little while but we have our entire character selected so now what you want to do is go Control c Control v also the selection doesn't have to be perfect you can see it's a little bit messed up here you can delete all these extra bits with the eraser tool if you want just by going like this all right so now you want to click on the background layer now if you have photoshop cc 2021 like me you can go select sky so then it'll just select the entire sky as you can see here it messed up a little bit on the flowers so i'll just deselect that really quick but you can see here it got almost the entire sky now if you don't have photoshop 2021 you just need to use the magic wand tool and select it that way unfortunately all right so now you just want to go delete and now you can see here the sky is gone and now we're going to replace this with a different sky so what i like to do is just search sky 1080p on Google and there's a ton of good skies here. There's a few that I actually use pretty regularly like this one if you can actually get it in HD. This is not HD. Please don't use it when it looks like this. In this case I'll be using this one because I think it looks good. So I'm just going to go copy image and then paste it into Photoshop. I'm going to put it under the background layer. I'm going to resize it so it fits completely. But you can see here it looks a little bit weird because the whole scene is rotated except for the sky. So all you have to do is do Control T, resize it a bit, and then just rotate it so it fits like this. Alright, so that's what that looks like. I think that looks pretty good. Now our thumbnail is looking a little bit dull. You see, you, do you want to click on this? No, that looks, it's bold. It's, <laughs> it's dull and it's boring. So what you need to do is you need to go to adjustments, and we're going to add a brightness and contrast along with a vibrance. So first of all, I'm going to put it on the sky. So it's just going to create a layer here. I'm going to move it on top of the sky so now it only affects the layers under it so I'm just going to increase the brightness a little bit maybe there I'm going to add a vibrance and I'm just going to increase the vibrance and the saturation a little bit I like that so now I'm just going to merge them by selecting all three of them and pressing Control E and there you go and now I'm going to do the background layer 
So to make it so your brightness doesn't affect all the layers under, because all, all you want it to affect is the background, right? All we need to do is click on our thing, and then hold down Alt, and put your cursor in between the two layers like this. Click. And now it only affects the layer under it. So now we can increase the brightness like that. Not a ton. Then I'm going to add a vibrance. Press Alt again. I'm just going to increase the saturation and the vibrance a little bit. Like that. I like that. It looks a, little bit, it looks a lot more colorful. And then we have to do it on me as well. So I'm going to create brightness and contrast once again. Press Alt and increase it a little bit. Then I'm going to add a vibrance. Hold Alt and increase that a little bit to where I like it. Like there. So now this looks so much more colorful. Do you want to click on this? Because I do. That looks great. So now I'm going to merge these into this and merge these into this. And now we have these three layers. Alright, so now our character doesn't stand out very much. If we were to zoom out to 15%, this is about how you'd see it on YouTube, and my character doesn't stick out very much. So how are we going to make this stick out? Just double click your layer, I'm going to move this into the corner really quick so we can see. And now, here we're going to add some effects to make him stand out. First of all, I'm going to add a drop shadow. And these are my settings that I usually use for drop shadows on these types of thumbnails, I think they look good. So if you want, you can just go ahead and copy these. Next, I add a gradient overlay. Don't do it like this, please. This is just what I did last time for a different thumbnail. Just don't do it like this. What I like to do is get a black to white, and sometimes kind of a darkish gray to light, maybe like that. I think that'll look better. And make this a little more of a lighter gray. And then reduce the opacity a little bit, just so it's kind of darker on the bottom. It looks better, in my opinion. All right, so I think that looks good like that. So now you can see, because of the drop shadow, he actually stands out a ton more. And what I like to do is I like to copy this layer style and paste it onto the background as well, but remove the drop shadow. In some cases, you can actually keep the drop shadow where it actually looks okay. If you have a really low opacity shadow like this, it doesn't actually look that bad. But in this case, just because I'm used to I'm going to remove it. Alright, next up is that popular motion blur effect you see in every single thumbnail. So here's how you create that motion blur effect. I'm going to merge the sky and the background like that, and then I'm going to go filter, blur, radial blur, set it to zoom, and I'm going to put it over here, because you see my character is on the side of the thumbnail. This is the point on the image where it will do it. You want this to the side, obviously, because our character is over the side, so I'll put it about there. You can change the amount. I recommend 5 to 10. For this, I'm going to go 5, because usually 10 looks like a little bit much. So 5, I think, will look good. I'm going to press OK. And now, yes, you can see that looks good, but there's this, how do we fix this? This really strange outline here. To fix this, what I recommend doing is grabbing your smudge tool, set it to the soft ground brush, make it pretty big, and reduce the strength quite a bit. And then I do on zooming out, and then just kind of going like this, and you can see it's gonna be a little bit laggy, you can see here, but it is fixing the outline. So then around these tiny bits, you just want to decrease it because it's massive right now. Alright, so that looks pretty good like that. So now our character really stands out. But now, what if you want to add text? So, text. There's a lot of options when it comes to text. You can make it really simple, really complex. For this style, I like to do pretty simple because the thumbnail in general is pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose whatever font I want. Um, I use Coolvetic on my thumbnails, my personal thumbnails, just because it's kind of my the font that I've been using on everything. So I'm just going to type thumbnail tutorial. So now what I do when we have our two texts is I line them up. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. We're going to resize it in a minute, and I'm going to line these two up and then make it so they're about the same length. But because they're different amounts of letters, they are going to vary in size. So I'm going to select both of these, I'm going to go Control t and upscale this to maybe about here, I think that'll look good. Alright, so you have our text, but you can see it blends in quite a bit the background. You can't read this bit right here because it, the sky is white over here, and the text is white. So now what do you do? One thing you can do if you're really lazy is copy the layer style from your character, select both of the text layers, right click, paste layer style, and now you can see here it has this shadow that actually works pretty well. But if you want to make this look a lot better, you can double click on this. And we're going to add a few more things. We'll move this over here so we can see. 
and I'm going to add a gradient overlay, set it to normal, but I'm going to make the top of it perfectly white, and I'm going to make the bottom of it this lightish gray here, I'm going to make the blend mode 100%, I'm going to make the angle 90 degrees, I may make that gray a little bit lighter, that doesn't look that good. About there, I think that looks good like that. And then I'm going to add an inner glow. And I can see it has this tiny little shine around it, which looks good in my opinion. And then I'm going to press OK. Copy this layer style onto this text here. And now if you want, if you don't like how both texts are the same color, what I usually do is to take whatever the top text is, so in that case it's thumbnail, and I'm going to change the color of it. To do that, you just have to go to the gradient overlay. What I usually do is I go red or yellow because those two colors stand out the most. I'll be going for the bottom color, I'll be going with a little bit of an orangish yellow like that. And then for the top, I'm going to make it basically straight up yellow like that. And now you can see here, that looks pretty good. But, we're not done yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure you have our text selected. I'm going to go right click, rasterize type. And I'm going to go to go, I'm going to select one of them at a time. I'm going to go edit, transform, warp. I'm going to set the warp mode to arc, change the bend to three degrees. And I'm going to do that for the second one. All right, so now we have our text looking like that. But we're still not done. There's still a little bit more you can do here. I'm going to merge the text layers and I'm going to press control T, hold control my mouse. I'm going to select one of the corners here. In that case, that'll be the top right corner and I'm going to just drag like this and it creates this really cool bending effect like that and press check mark and I've got our text looking like that another thing you can do is you can put your text under your character layer if it's still visible because sometimes if it covers up too many of the letters it's hard to read so in that case I'm going to keep it up like this so you can still read it so another thing you can do to make your character pop out more is search starburst PNG. I know it's kind of a weird search, but you'll get stuff like these, and these are using thumbnails a lot. Um, it's kind of hard to find one that's actually transparent, because, you know, this isn't transparent. This is exactly what we're looking for, but it's not really transparent. So what you want to do is you can usually click on the link, then press free download or whatever, and then download PNG, and then press free download. So I'm just going to drag into Photoshop, and here we have this. So now it is black. I like white starburst because it just looks better overall in here. I'm going to put it under my character layer. I'm just going to drag it right here. So now I've got that. It's just a little effect. It's not much. But yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So all I did was just make my text stand out a little bit more. So now here we have our thumbnail. I think that looks pretty good. So yeah, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you want more tutorials for the rest of the styles that I do, go to my design channel, first link in the description. And there I'll be posting tutorials for all the other styles that I do. Alright, once again, thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.